Welcome to Folding Fractions and Decimals. In this lesson, I'm learning to multiply fractions and decimals. Let's start with this question here. I want to shade 3 quarters of 1 half of a piece of paper. Well, I'm going to start by drawing my half. So if you could imagine this is a piece of paper, and now I'm cutting it in half. Well, so the half that I'm going to be looking at is this top half. Now my question says that I need to shade 3 quarters of this half. So that means I need to cut this shape into quarters. And the easiest way for me to do it is just to draw lines down through here. So now you see that I'm cutting it into quarters. This is one quarter, two quarters, three quarters, and that's four quarters or one whole. Now the question says I need to shade in three of those quarters. So I'm going to shade this one here in, this one here in, and this one here in. And notice I'm not shading these bottom bits here because I'm shading three quarters of one half and I'm looking at the top half here. So now let's work out what I've got here. Well you can see that I've shaded three pieces. And you can also see that my piece of paper is now split into eight pieces. So three quarters of one half is three eighths. Let's try another question. Uh, this time I want to shade one half of two tenths. I'm going to start by drawing out my tenths. So now that I've drawn this shape, I need to cut it into tenths, like my question says. So now my shape is cut into tenths. And it says that I, the numerator tells me that I'm looking at two of these tenths. So I'm going to look at these two tenths down here. Another way to look at it would be to name each of these tenths. So this is one tenth, this is two tenths, this is three tenths, etc. All the way up to this one, which would be ten tenths. But of course, I'm only looking at these first two. Now, it says that I need to shade in half of these two tenths. So I'm going to have to cut this shape in half. And the easiest way to do that is to split it straight down the middle. So here I have one half, and here I have my second half. And you can see by putting them together, I've got two halves or, or one whole. Right, well I need to shade one half of my two tenths. So I go down to my two tenths, and I know that I'm talking about these uh, two tenths here, but I only need to shade one half, so not this bottom half. So I'm going to shade in here, that's one half, and that is the second half. So now you can see that I have shaded two pieces, and that's out of a total of 20 pieces, because there's 10 in this top row and 10 in this bottom row. Now you might have noticed a little pattern um, as we've been working these out. If I multiply these numerators together, 1 times 2, I get the numerator for my answer, 2. And if I multiply these denominators together, 2 times 10, that equals 20. Let's go up and see if that worked for the first one. 3 times 1, that equals 3. And 4 times 2, that equals 8. Now let's just go back to this question for a minute. Now you might also know that 2 tenths, well I'm sure you do know, 2 tenths is the same as 1 tenth. Now at the start of this lesson, I said we're going to be able to uh, work out multiplication questions for fractions and decimals. So let's have a look at this question here as a decimal. 
Well, one half we know is 0 0.5 and two tenths is the same as 0 0.5. Now before we work out uh, the answer to this one here, let's look at a couple of things. Up here we worked out that the answer to 1 half times 2 tenths was 1 tenth. And we know that 1 tenth is the same as 0 0.1. So when we work it out as a decimal, our answer should be 0 0.1. Now we also know that from our basic facts that 5 times 2 equals so now I'm just going to write in the answer that we worked out using fractions that we worked out up here. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.2 equals 0 0.1. So what is the point of the, or what is the role of the decimal point in these questions? Well, the decimal point uh, helps us work out where the ones place is. Now sometimes it can be a little bit confusing working out where this uh, decimal point needs to fit. So one little trick that I use is I think of this question without decimals, first of all. So like down here where I've got 5 times 2 and I've said that that equals 10. And then I imagine my decimal point sitting here. Next I go up to my question and I count how many numbers can I see behind a decimal point. Well I can see one number behind a decimal point here and I can see two numbers behind a decimal point here. So now I move my decimal point up two. So this is where it's going to fit. And I will get 0 0.1 and you know I don't really need to worry about that zero here. Sometimes people get a little bit confused with these uh, questions when we're using decimals because we're doing a multiplication question and we're ending up with an answer that's smaller than the two numbers we started with. But remember, when we go back and look at our pictures here, you can see why we're getting smaller numbers. Because we're talking about a fraction of a fraction. Now let's try one last question uh, without a picture. I want to find four tenths of four tenths. Now you know from earlier that one way that I can do this is multiply my numerators together. So four times four equals sixteen. Then to work out the denominator, I multiply my de denominators together. Ten times ten, that equals one hundred. So 4 tenths times 4 tenths equals 16 hundredths. Now you know from earlier lessons that we can change 16 hundredths into a decimal. It looks like this, 0 0.16. Because 16 hundredths is the same as 1 tenth and 6 hundredths. Because there are 10 hundredths in a tenth. Now let's have a look at this question as a decimal. Well, 4 tenths is 0 0.4, and over here again we've got another 0 0.4 for 4 tenths. Now our answer should be 0 0.16. Let's see if we can work that out. Well, I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to imagine it without a decimal point. So 4 times 4, I know is 16. Now remember the role of the decimal point is to show us where the ones column fits. I'll just write 16 over here again so I've got a little bit more space. Now my little trick was to go up here and count how many numbers can I see behind the decimal point. I can see one here and I can see a second one here. So I put or imagine a decimal point there and I need to move it up two places. So that's one movement that's my second movement. So that's where the decimal point is going to sit. And if I look at how, um, the answer I got when I worked it out as a fraction, I've got the right number, 0 0.16. I hope you found this lesson helpful. For more lessons, check out teachertools.co.nz.